We're looking at the fuel gauge. The issue is that uh, no matter how much gas I put in it or how much I use, it always stays the same. So what we're going to do today is try to troubleshoot this issue from the sender unit and see if it's a gauge issue or not. We're going to also include a multimeter and put it on the ohms of resistance to see if we can figure out what is going on, if it's the actual gauge or the sender unit that may need to be cleaned. Let's check it out. So I first went ahead and removed the carpet, which is right down here, out of the vehicle, uh, which would expose then this right here, which is the fuel sending unit. Um, so um, once you remove the carpet, you'll actually take this particular piece off right here, and it'll expo expose this unit. Uh, and this is the wiring that goes to the instrument cluster up there to tell it how much fuel it has. So you're going to remove this. Okay. Next, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to go back to the front of the car and you're going to turn the car to the on position. You want to make sure that you have your meter sitting here, you know, that uh, you have everything clean. Just one second. So if you look very clearly here, you're going to see some markings. You're going to see a G and a T. The G's right there. It's kind of hard to see, and a T. What you're going to do is set your oil meter, and I'm going to try to do this with the phone, so bear with me. You're going to set your oil meter to 200, which is the closest to the resistance. Now, what I did is I found a proper scale from Clark's Garage. You guys may be very familiar with that for the 944s. Uh, he gives you a table to indicate, based off of your resistance, how much fuel um, the tank is indicating or the sending, unit, the sending unit is indicating is in the tank. Now, I know I have at least half a tank of fuel in here uh, because I have about eight or nine gallons in here, and it's still basically showing a little bit over a uh, quarter of a tank. So let's now, what we're going to do is take these two, and I'm going to try to do this with one hand, and put these up against the two leads here. So here, we can see, as long as I keep it up here, I'm running a 33 with these two connected. 33 that indicates exactly just about what we should have. I think it's 41 or so for a half a tank um, and the resistance goes up with less gas. So this actually is telling me that based off of here, the reading that the sending unit is getting to the gauge is dead on accurate. So those two things are accurate. So there's nothing I need to troubleshoot up there with my gauge, my cluster, anything like that. So in the process of fixing, trying to fix my odometer, I did the fun thing and I broke the needle. See there? That needle sits right in there and actually has a plastic housing that this first screws into. This screws down in here. And I broke, trying to take the needle off. See, that goes through there, sits in there. And then this needle here sits on top of that. And when this moves, this causes the needle to work and as you can see there I broke the two different ends now let's focus oops come here this end and that end go there together so I gotta try to come up with a fix um, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet I'm gonna try to first get this needle out of here then once I do that, I can try to see if I can get the other piece back on um, or come up with a fix. Um, I took this apart because my I want to check my ground here. Um, oh man, this thing is having not problems focusing on my gas tank. And uh, get that did that and had some ADD and went to try to look at the odometer since I was already in here. But broke the broke the speedometer at the process. So also, yeah, the odometer is broke because we have a broken gear. So we need to reorder another gear or, oh, <laughs> see that? Crumble to pieces. 
wonderful, wonderful stuff, Porsche. I mean, look at that. That's the gear that uh, works with the speedometer. So we're going to, of course, uh, go ahead and see if we need to order a new one um, that's going to be at cost. I'm trying to do this as cheap as possible. We'll see. So here I'm showing you basically after I got the needle of the part that's broken out in the socket or the piece that goes into uh, the actual indicator. See those two pieces I had to pull apart that wouldn't come apart originally. And uh, here I'm showing you where that connects to um, or the other end that broke off. Um, and uh, yes, it's a mess. And so um, as we see here, there's uh, super glue. What are we gonna do with super glue? Well, we're gonna go ahead and try to super glue this back on. And as you see, this was my first attempt to super glue the needle back together to try to get it to, uh, to work. Yeah. And so um, here we have that retainer, that, that guide uh, thing put back into that plastic piece that keeps it from wobbling around too much. I didn't tighten it down too far um, because I didn't want to do that. And there's some fingernail polish because I want to repaint that particular indicator because it was quite faded. And so here's me screwing this, this, everything back in together. That's four of those uh, flathead screws that you want to put and make sure that they're tight back in after you're uh, putting the unit back together. And so I'm trying to give you some live action video of me doing a repair. And so here's me after I got everything in the black face back on and her needle back back together there to some degree, testing it to make sure it works. Um, and it looks like at least at the indicator or it works just like everything else does. So it's good to go ahead and give it a test. Let's see what happens. Okay, so um, as you notice in that very short video, the tachometer wasn't working. Um, very strange. I connected everything back up correctly. Uh, got the connectors. The connectors only go one way. You can't switch them around. Um, everything connected back, but for some reason it wasn't picking up. I checked my uh, actual wiring or make sure that I didn't break any of the, uh, the connector lines uh, that connect into that connector. They all look good, but for some reason it's still not working. Got to do some more troubleshooting there. However, as you saw, the speedometer is working for how long <laughs> with the super glue? Who knows? It can get warm, really hot outside, and it could totally break, or it could last for a very long time. It's kind of an iffy thing, but I might go ahead and replace the whole unit. Um, the actual fuel indicator actually started working some. So it still fluctuates, which tells me there's still a ground issue where it actually shows that I'm over half a tank now, and, it, and that's the correct reading. So at least that's good because then I kind of know how much gas I have in my car. I don't feel like I'm going to run out of gas. Um, and also with the odometer not working, it was kind of really just iffy thing when that doesn't work. The two of those things together, it's, it's believe me, it's not very good uh, when you don't know for sure. Um, when you're going to run out of gas, but we got something there. So we know that that's working pretty good um, But yeah, so the next step is to do some more troubleshooting on the tachometer read 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 go back to Clark's garage uh, Look at Pelican parts uh, forms, you know, and that's where I get my information and get an idea of what's going on Something they say something about the contacts get a little bit uh, They they rub out too much and then it causes some issues So I'm going to kind of go back there and do some more troubleshooting um, But that's fine um, so I really want to record this video for you guys because um, I want to use the multimeter. Um, that's something that I want to incorporate in some of my videos, uh, which I haven't done previously and is actually a part of my learning process. Again, I put the, that on 200 ohms of resistance. Um, those readings came out exactly like Clark's Garage said it would. Um, I tell you guys, that guy and that website is an awesome resource. Definitely use it if you can. Um, and so... I want to show you that process, looking at the, the fuel sending unit, how to take that off, how to check it. Um, I couldn't get my fuel sending unit cap off. I have to actually go and they say to get a um, oil filter remover, uh, one of those really long, like white claws and use that instead, which I did not have on me. I need to actually purchase. Um, um, but I didn't actually have to do that because I found that there's an issue probably uh, di directly from the gauge cluster that's causing that to happen. It's not so much in the tank. So uh, again, this is just another video for you guys to watch. Uh, just an update on the project, what's going on, how I'm sitting up late at night 
to two o'clock in the morning, uh, working all some of these things and then getting up at six o'clock to go to work. I know I'm crazy. I'm going to die soon because I don't get any sleep, but I get a lot accomplished. So anyway, uh, if you like what you see, uh, just hit the like button, subscribe, let me know what you think. And if you're looking or doing some other troubleshooting, you want some videos, I'll see if that's on my list of things to do and I'll get back with you. All right, guys, take care. Bye.